Good morning, everybody. God bless you, and welcome to Harvest Time. Why don't we stand together? Let's prepare to worship the Lord, and we want to greet everybody who's watching us on the web today. Why don't you stand also and just make your home or wherever you're watching us a sanctuary, and we want to say happy Father's Day to all of our dads. We love you dads so much, and we're so grateful also for the love of our Heavenly Father today. Come on, would you lift a hand with me, and let's just give some praise to Him. Lord, we thank you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for loving us so much, for giving us, as your word says, the adoption. You've caused us to become your sons and daughters through the grace of Jesus, your son. And so because of that, we're a grateful people this morning, and we've gathered in the name of your son to worship you. So Lord, let our praises bring pleasure to your heart on this beautiful morning that you've given us. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's worship him together.
of love, your ransoming, rescuing, redeeming heart towards us.
perfect in all of your ways, and you're worthy, and you're mighty, and you're magnificent, Father. Thank you. Thank you for being worthy of our praise, worthy of our adoration. Lord, we sing to you now.
like you. And because of that, we praise your name. Father, thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for giving us the willingness to praise you. Father, we worship you. So Holy Spirit, we thank you for this time. We thank you for coming. We thank you for continuing to pierce our hearts and move among us. Father, we give this service to you. We give our hearts to you. In Jesus' name. Before you're seated, you can turn to your neighbor, give them an air high five or an air hug. God bless. Well, good morning, Harvest Time Church. All right, let's try that again. Good morning, Harvest Time Church. All right, I'm giving you my air hug. Hallelujah. God bless you. Love you guys. So glad to be in the house. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see you in the Father's house. Before I even do anything, let me ask you to honor all of our dads in the house. Come on. Let's honor our fathers. <laughs> Happy Father's Day. We honor you. We love you to all the men that are dads in this house. But above all, church, can we honor our Heavenly Father for being a good father? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Welcome to the newlyweds, Ed and Aaron. Congratulations. Welcome to the house. Love you guys. I love the ceremony. It was beautiful. We are practicing social distancing church, as you know it. Uh, so if you would, would feel comfortable moving around, if you are so close to somebody and you need the space, the six feet distance, please feel free to move ahead and find a different seat in the sanctuary. We have marked, demarcated the rows clearly where you are able to sit. Also, if the sun is beaming down on you, I will buy you some sunglasses afterwards, or if you feel comfortable, you may also move to a different seat. Church, we would love to thank you for your continued financial support since the shutdown began in March of this year. We appreciate your faithfulness to the work of the kingdom. Uh, many people are giving online these days, and they're also giving by text. My wife and I love giving by text. These instructions on how to give that in that fashion is online or available on the screens right now. Church, you can also give online at any time. Our bomb diggity pastor, Nick Yuva, created a nice giving link on the right top hand corner top right-hand corner of our website, htchurch.com, and you can click on that link to get started. If you prefer giving by mail, please, you are more than welcome to certainly do so as well. Church, due to social distancing, we won't be passing an offering plate this morning, but we do have receptacles at the entrances on your way out where you could uh, place your offering in as you leave the sanctuary this morning. So church, it is my great uh, honor and uh, joy to uh, welcome a friend uh, of the house at HTC, Pastor Judy Mensch, uh, to us this morning. She is back at Harvest Time this morning. She is not a guest, uh, but she is a part of our Harvest Time family. She has served on staff at Harvest Time as the children's pastor from 1999 to 2002. Drop the mic, Pastor Judy, right there. She is also embarking on a new ministry assignment from the Lord. And she's going to be sharing a little more as she comes up to share the word of the Lord with us. So church, can we give our very best Harvest Time welcome to Pastor Judy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Some of you are saying, why are those people standing? We don't really know her. But they do. They know me and they know that I'm still crazy after all these years. I really am. But 
crazy about Jesus and crazy to serve him. But it is so great to be here. Uh, I was here a long time ago. Uh, in, I was on staff a long time ago before you were in this beautiful building. I was in the Civic Center. How many of you were in the Civic Center? All right, yeah, those are the ones that stood up. See, that's why they knew me, yeah. And so it is wonderful to be here. I do want you to know that I am a missionary, and this church has supported me for the last 14 years. Okay? So thank you. I was a missionary to the Netherlands. I am and was and always have been and probably always will be a children's evangelist. I work with kids and I train teachers how to teach children. And that's what I do overseas. I was doing that in the Netherlands for thir the last 13 years and, uh, and it was great. And then AGWM, which is the Assemblies of God World Missions, which this church is part of the Assemblies of God, but the World Missions Department asked me if I could change assignment. First, I thought they wanted me to move to a different country, which would mean now I'd have to learn another language. I had to learn Dutch uh, 13 years ago, and that was kind of tough. Actually, that was niet machelijk. So, you know, anyway, <laughs> that means it was not easy. So, they didn't want me to go to another country. What they wanted me to do, they said, here's your new assignment, if you'll take it. We want you to travel back and forth to Europe with small teams of people to evangelize children and to train teachers. And I thought, uh, and be based in America. And I thought, wow, that is a dream job for me. That really is. And no, I know it does not sound so appealing. Come with me to Europe, <laughs> you know, right now with COVID. But soon it'll be very needy over there. It always has been. But soon it'll be needy and soon we'll be able to fly. And soon it will not be dangerous. And so some of you might be coming with me to Europe. And they would be short trips, like seven to ten day trips to do teacher training. And then at the end, when we've done the training, we do an evangelistic outreach program for the kids with the people that we've trained. Doesn't that sound cool? I mean, who wouldn't want that job? Really? I just think that's the best thing in the world. So thank you for your support as a church, financially and in prayer. I know you do that too. And I, I was just telling another church that sometimes I feel like prayer is the safety net for me. Like I know I probably should be dead by now with all the things that could have happened to me. But I know that there are people praying for me and there is a mission that God has for me and there is a destiny that God has for me until I take my last breath. And it's because people are supporting me in prayer and financially. Otherwise, I could never do this. And so, yeah, thank you very much. Now, during this time of COVID, I want to tell you because I can't travel, just like everybody else can't go to, couldn't go to churches, I couldn't go speak at churches. So I started going to churches online. And you'd probably come to this one online all the time. But at 10 o'clock on every Sunday morning, I would go to a different supporting church. And I would join in the chat and let them know that your missionary, Judy Mench, is here with you today. And thank you and all that. And every church I went to was at 10 o'clock, except harvest time. I'd go to a different church every week, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock. But 9 o'clock, I would always be here every week during the time when you were live streaming. So it almost felt like I was back here again. It was the coolest thing. And can I? Yeah, it was. It was. And then I also wanted to say, you know, when I was on staff as a children's pastor, it was 20 years ago. And 
And I don't think I ever heard Pastor Glenn preach because I was always with the children. He is a good preacher. He is. He, he informs, he inspires, he encourages. He's great. And I would tell him so. I would critique his sermons, too, at the end of every Sunday. But I would tell him, he, and, and Pastor Nick, what a great worship leader. I mean it. If you, and this, the, the way you can tell that someone is a great worship leader is if it's not the Nick Uva show, okay? Like he steps back and gives the glory to God. It's not a concert. Am I right? And so I, that nine o'clock service for me was the only consistent thing it, that I was doing uh, as far as church goes, and I loved it. It was wonderful. So thank you. Thank you for being my brothers and sisters, ones that I know a long time, and ones that I'm just meeting today, and it's good to be here. And I'd like to say you're dismissed now, but I haven't even started. <laughs> Your theme the last few weeks has been, yeah, little things, big God. How small things can turn into great things. How insignificant things can turn into great things. How insignificant people, and I would never say anybody is, but when, but when we come out of a bruised world, we, are, we sometimes don't have much to give, but with God, we can be great. And I don't mean great people, I mean effective people. That's the best word to use. It's not successful, it's not great, or else we'd be walking around like, you know, I'm this, but it's not. It's effective people. Effective people affect other people, and that's what this message is about. I know two weeks ago, Pastor Glenn talked about Joseph. I know last week, Pastor Nick talked about David. And this week, I'm going to talk about a little mustard seed. <laughs> Not a person, but a seed. And so from Matthew chapter 13, I'm going to read verses 31 and 32. If you'd like to turn to it, you can. Uh, Matthew 13, 31 and 32. He told them another parable. We're talking about Jesus here. He had just finished a series of parables, agricultural parables. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch in its branches. The idea of this parable is that great things can come from small beginnings. That's the basic of the parable. Great things can come from small beginnings. The mustard seed can grow beyond anyone's expectations. But this is a typical mustard seed that you're looking at right now. And some of them are even smaller than that. It's like a grain of sand. It's really a very tiny thing. And this, is, and this is what Jesus said. It grows into something. And we're picturing like a mighty oak tree or a great redwood tree from California. A giant tree can come from that. But this is what it turns into. It's pretty much a plant or even like a weed that's what a mustard seed is. Or sometimes, possibly, it's a bush, like that. Or then, if it lives long enough, it could turn into this. It's like a series of shrubs. And that is basically the tree that Jesus was talking about, but not this tree. This tree doesn't grow in the Middle East. This is not the tree that Jesus was talking about. And all of his listeners knew that. But he said that tiny little mustard seed could grow into a great tree where birds could perch. You think he was joking? I mean, it really turns into a bush, a plant, a weed. 
a small tree. No, what I think Jesus was really talking about, he was saying this little mustard seed could turn into something unbelievable because it really doesn't grow this big. That, that tree does grow, but not in the Middle East. And you know what it needs? It needs moisture. It, it needs, and it says that if a frost comes, it really grows. So we're not talking about the desert. That is not a desert tree. So I believe Jesus was saying that this tree is such a wild illustration that it's something that is not only unexpected, but too good to be true. So what's little can grow into something so big, it's too good to be true, except it is true. Because something insignificant, something that maybe is not as smart as the next little seed, something very small, something with a lot of baggage, something with a very bad background, could grow into something very effective with big branches that birds can land in that, that can provide shade, that could provide protection for people. So I think it wasn't a joke Jesus was making. He was saying, you're not just going to turn into a bush or a shrub or a plant or kind of a shrubby tree, but you're going to turn into something that is so unexpected, that is so effective. If you allow God to do what he wants to do, that's the first thing. There's two things. If you yield to God and let him do what he wants to do, and then we have a part to do also. So those are the two points that I'm going to make today about the, how to grow a mustard seed into a big mustard tree that doesn't even exist in the Middle East, okay? Because otherwise, you're going to stay a mustard seed. And you know what you're good for? A hot dog. Really, you could get crushed, join with a few other mustard seeds, and put on a hot dog. That's what you're good for. But God wants us to grow into a great tree that will bear fruit, that will provide shade, that will be strong and grow for him. But here are the two things that we need. The first thing, we have to remember where we came from. We have to remember that we are just a little mustard seed. And if we want to be effective, it is because of who God is, not because of who you are. It's true. You could be super talented. Big deal. It is no big deal. You could be so smart. You could have such an IQ that you'd blow everybody out of the room with your IQ. Doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. What matters is not you, but who God is. You are just a little mustard seed, good for a hot dog, pretty much. So what we need to do is we need to stay humble. And let me tell you a few things about humility, because I'm a real expert on it. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, humble people think of others more than they think of themselves. That is a key element in the kingdom of God. Servanthood is another way of putting it. Sorry, I was getting scared. <laughs> okay, servanthood is another way of putting it. It's part of the law of opposites in scriptures. Servanthood. You'll finish these sentences for me. The last shall be... What profits a man if he gains the whole world but loses his soul? If I exalt myself, God will humble me. If I humble myself, God will... Right. The, the, the last in the kingdom will be first. 
All of those things are part of what I call the law of opposites. We take the, the last seat at the table. We don't sit at the head of the table because we think of others first. That's what a humble person does. A humble person is also a good listener. Do you know people who don't listen to you? They might hear you, but they don't listen to you. Now, I know it's Father's Day, and I shouldn't be saying this, but my father never listened to me. <laughs> he was not a listener. He was a good man. His name was Arnie Mensch. He was a nice guy. My mother's name was Phyllis Mensch, and their initials were AM and PM. <laughs> and my father gave my mother an ankle bracelet when they were first married that said, with love from AM to PM. Come on, it's beautiful, it is, okay? <laughs> but you know, he didn't listen. I'd come home and he'd say, hi honey, how was your day? And I said, dad, it was great. I jumped off the Empire State Building and then I flew all the way to the Lower East Side. And you know, he'd be at his desk and he'd say, oh, that's great, honey. Didn't matter, it was like a joke. Like how horrible could I say things? and he wouldn't hear. And then there are people who don't listen, but they have something to say. So they're always perched at the end of their seat, ready to say something that you didn't have anything to do with what you just said. They just want to say something. There are those people too. But humble people are good listeners. They really listen. They hear what you say. Humble people are also great people. They say thank you and they mean it because they're grateful. And can I tell you something? During this time when we feel like things are being taken away from us, maybe rights are being taken away from us, uh, maybe money is being taken away from us because of loss of jobs, be thankful. It is only a good thing to be thankful. Be thankful for what you do have. Be thankful that, the, that you're here. Be thankful. Thankful, humble people are thankful people. Be full of thanks. Be grateful for what you have. And concentrate on what you have. You know, sometimes as Americans, we think we have all these rights. And I know, according to the Constitution, we do. But really, when you think about it, we just should just thank God that we're here. Because if I really got what I deserved, I'm sure I'd be dead. I mean it, and you too. We, we have, it's almost like we have no rights. And I don't mean that we have no rights, but it's that we need to be grateful and thankful for what we do have. Thank you. Thank you for that amen back there. I appreciate that. <laughs> so we are grateful people. There's a family, a family in Holland. They had three kids that I became close with, I became very friendly with. And the little one, her name was Manoa, um, she was just the cutest thing. And she was the best gift getter I have ever met. You would give her like a little plastic bird. She'd be dancing around saying it's the most beautiful thing she ever saw. And she would love it, genuinely love it. And you loved giving her gifts because she loved everything that you gave her. And she meant it. And that's how it should be with us. God loves giving us gifts. And so let's thank him for everything that we have. The second point about what we need to remember if we really want to grow into the tree God wants us to be is that ultimately it is God who causes us to grow. Ultimately, God is the one that causes us to grow. Do you know what a bonsai tree is? You've seen bonsai trees. Well, about 100 years ago, I went to a church in Flemington, New Jersey, and one of the, uh, to do a, to, to children's evangelism. And one of the board members had a bonsai tree farm. So he gave me a tour, a whole day tour. And he showed me 
how they bend the trees, how they wet them, how they, how they wire them so they grow. And sometimes by request, a person would want a tree that you know, grew this way. And so they would do that to the trees. And it was so interesting. And we, I know I'm mixing metaphors. I'm doing a lot of tree metaphors. But that's what we have to do. We have to yield ourselves to God. So if God wants us to grow that way, even though we want to grow this way, we yield ourselves to God. Now, where are the children in the room? Do this if you're a child. No, not really the adults. I'm in the children like under 12 or so. Wave your hand so I can see where you are. Okay, we have a few. Oh, good, we have a few. Now listen, I'm going to ask you later, what does it mean to yield yourself to God? Okay? And yielding yourself to God is letting him do what he wants. That's what it means. So later I'm going to ask somebody, a kid, what does it mean to yield yourself to God? So remember what it means. It means doing what he wants you to do. Got it, kids? All right. Now, you adults should remember that too, but it won't be a game for you. Okay? So we, God wants to make us into what he has for us. But it's not only God shaping us. We have a responsibility also. So I would like to read the first three verses of Psalm 1 right now. If you want, want to turn to it, you can, but I do have it up on the screen. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked uh, or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yield its fruit in its season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do, Pro, whatever they do prospers. So let's just take it piece by piece. You are the tree. There are responsibilities that you have. You yield yourself to God so he does what he wants to do. He's like the sun, S-U-N. He's like the water. He's like the nutrients in the soils. But what do you do? What responsibilities do you have? Starting with the first verse, do not walk in step with the wicked. That means it's all about who you hang out with. That's the question. Who are you hanging out with? And kids, I'm asking you that too, children that are here. Who are you hanging out with? Because whoever you hang out with, you will be like. There's a saying that goes, you'll know a man by his friends. And that's really true, because who you hang out with, that's who you will become, just like that person. So you want to stay with people who will build you up, who will draw you closer to God. Stay with people who will influence you toward God, and don't hang out with people who will tear you down. Sometimes I'm with a person who's such a drag and so negative that after I leave them, I feel like I have to take a shower. I, I am not kidding. It's like, ugh, this is disgusting. And I want to get in the shower because I just can't get all, you have all this like negativity hanging on you. And if you're staying with that long enough, that negativity it, by osmosis will go into you. And that is not what God wants. He wants us to hang out with people who will uplift us, who will give positive. I'd rather hang out with an idealist any day than a realist. I mean it. Realists are sometimes kind of drags. You know, they're very pessimistic. Give me an optimist any day. I don't care if they're wrong. I'd rather be with them. Really, because it lifts you up. And be that way, not only hang out with people that way, but you should be that way. That's, that's when I said uh, about Pastor Glenn's messages, that's one of the things he always does when he speaks. And I told you, I never heard him when I was a children's pastor. This is only during COVID. 
He's like been my pastor. And so he always uplifts. He always encourages. And he's not afraid to give you hard stuff. It's not that. But he always helps you. And if it's this way, then do this. You know, so it's, it's always encouraging. And that's who we need to hang out with. That's who we need to listen to. I have a friend up in Massachusetts. I can't be with her more than a half an hour. I want to kill myself. I mean, not really, kids, but you know, I just, it's just such a drag. And people say, what's wrong? And I just say, I, I was just with Rosie, you know? And that's, that was, that's kind of a drag. Oh yeah, we're live streaming, aren't we? I, I, <laughs> I didn't mean it, no. <laughs> no, I've talked to her about it, so really it's okay. Um, okay, so stay with people who uplift you. And now, uh, the second verse says, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates in his law, on his law day and night? That means what's going into your head? What are you feeding yourself, right? Remember the old saying, you are what you eat? If that's true, I'm a bagel, pretty much. But you are what you eat, so what are you reading? What are you watching on television? What music are you listening to? What are you, uh, where are you going on the internet? What are you doing for entertainment? All of those things, all of those things can either make you grow or eat away at your tree so that you're just good for a hot dog. And that's it, you're a mustard seed the rest of your life, crushed and on a hot dog. But no, God wants you to be a tree. That means get into his word. Don't just read it, obey it. Read and obey his word. Uh, read things that are healthy for you. Watch television shows that are healthy for you, that are uplifting, that move you toward God. And, and even the internet, you, you know what's not good for you. Don't do it. Go to places that are uplifting. The third verse says, is, uh, that person is like a tree planted by streams of water. That means your roots grow deep. Do you know that most trees' roots are bigger than the actual tree itself? Because the roots are what matter. What's underground is what matters. What's underground determines the greatness of the tree above ground. Underground is where it gets its nourishment. What's not seen shapes the part that you do see. Do you get that? So I heard it said that people have three lives, public life, private life, and secret life. Public life and private life are normal. You know, we have, I have a public life like today. You're seeing my public life. I have a private life. You know, you, you, no, I don't think any of you have ever seen me in my pajamas, you know, watching TV. That's my private life. And then there's the secret life. That's the one that'll kill you. It will. That's the one that nourishes your roots. And so when I see a rotten tree, I can almost guarantee the roots are rotten because they're eating some rotten stuff or they're being fed some rotten stuff. That is why we need to make good choices. We will all, most of us will always have a public life and a private life, and that's okay, it's normal. But try not to have a secret life because a secret life can hurt you. Make good choices. Also in verse three it says, which yields its fruit in season. What kind of fruit do you have? The fruit that comes from a good tree could be soul saved, good deeds done, living like a light for Jesus Christ, forgiving those who hurt you. And on this Father's Day, 
I would like to say to all those who had questionable, were raised by questionable men, please forgive your father, even if he's not here anymore. Forgive your father because it's not going to hurt him. It's going to hurt you if you don't forgive. So forgiveness is part of the fruit, and that could be a sermon in itself. Yeah, I've even preached it, so yeah, forgiveness. Could be gentleness when you have a right to be angry. Answered prayers are fruits that come, miracles and wonders, and love that branches out in all directions, no pun intended. Get it? Branches, tree, okay. God calls us to be greater than we ever hope for ourselves. God calls us to be bigger than we ever thought we could be. God calls us to exceed our own expectations of ourselves. And more than that, he calls us to exceed the expectations of others that others have in, un, in us. That is a great God. Now, I want to play a game with you. Boys and girls, are you ready? This is not the yield question. This is, what tree is this? We're talking about trees, I thought I'd throw in a game. Okay, now here's the deal. When you see the picture of the tree, you have to stand up and shout out what tree you think it is. So let's just practice standing. Everybody stand up. <laughs> Come on, stand up. And okay, everybody standing, good. And I want you to shout out the word, the words orange tree, now. Okay, good, sit down. That's how the game works. You stand up and you shout out what kind of tree it is. Okay, you got it? Sometimes you have to practice standing. You know, in one of the services, everybody was sitting and shouting, and I wouldn't count it. I was ignoring them <laughs> and waited till someone stood. Okay. First picture, please. The, only the person that, yes, but it was a person that stood. Okay, some of you yelled it out and then stood. You got a little backwards, okay? You have to stand and then shout it out, okay? Right, you playing? Are you playing, honey, in the pink? Okay, good. Oh, wait. Uh, you, wait, you, sh you did it before I, what kind of a tree is it? All right, it's a mango tree, but I wasn't looking at my paper. I didn't even see it. All right, next tree, please. Apple tree, very good. Oh yeah, adults can play too. You can play too. Next tree. Papaya. And I say papaya for those who know. Okay, next tree. Very good. This side's really grooving over here, okay. All right, next please. Next. The kiwi tree. Right. You got it. I, heard, I saw you stand and yell it out. And the last tree? Cherry tree. Cherry tree. All right. Good job. Give yourselves a hand. Now, Hopefully you won't grow into a kiwi tree or a cherry tree, but God has a tree for you to be. Whatever journey he has for you, either individually or as a family or as a church, there is a harvest of trees here at Harvest Time Church. You will grow into, a ver into various trees, but whatever tree you grow into, now, again, this is kind of a weird illustration, but what happens is you become a sower of seeds. Once you grow into the tree, then you begin to sow seeds. 
because there is a whole world out there that needs to know that Jesus loves them. There is a whole world that doesn't even know they should be a mustard seed first and then grow into a tree. So not only do we become trees, but then we become sowers of the seeds. Let me tell you about a few people in the Bible who became, who went from mustard seed to great trees. And let me tell you, they started out just useful for a hot dog, but then they grew to be extremely effective. Moses. Moses stuttered and was adopted, and he never saw his dream fulfilled. But he's a great man of God, a great tree, an effective tree. David. David had a relationship with Bathsheba, then had her husband killed. Little mustard seed action going on there. But he became a great man of God, and loved God. Paul. Paul was a murderer. Rahab was a lady of the night. We're working with kids here. Ananias, the one who prayed for Paul when he was struck down blind, he was afraid. He had fear. The prophet Amos was a shepherd. Mary was a teenager when she gave birth to Jesus. James had a bad temper, and he was very arrogant, thinking he should, he should have a great place next to Jesus in heaven. Thomas had doubts. Joseph, as we heard from Pastor Glenn a couple of weeks ago, had a very rough beginning, was sold as a slave by his brothers, no less. And he became a great man of God, effective. Jeremiah was called a traitor. He was arrested, threatened throughout his whole career. John the Baptist was a recluse. Jonathan had an insane father. Naomi's husband had uh, Naomi's husband and two sons died. Esther was an orphan. Noah got drunk. Jonah complained and wanted to commit suicide. Elijah hid in a cave and didn't want to come out. Sarah was really old, 90, and still gave birth to Isaac. Jacob was a deceiver and a manipulator. All mustard seeds, great companions for a hot dog. But they became effective in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. You are, we are the kingdom of God. And God, did you know that the kingdom of God started out with Jesus and 12 guys? Started out with Jesus and 12 guys. And now in the United States, no, in the world, there are 2.3 billion Christians. Yeah. That is because they allowed God to shape them. In other words, they yielded to God. Who knows what that means? This kid right over here, stand up. Tell me, what does it mean? Yes. Yes, very good. They did what God wanted them to do. And it wasn't always easy because we have a plan. We have plans. This is what we want to do. And God is taking your little bonsai tree and saying, no, I want you to go this way. But God wants us to yield to him. God wants us to be that kind of a tree that not only bears fruit, but also sows seeds. Because there is a world out there. And guys, I got to tell you, after this COVID thing, there's going to be such a need, such a need. Don't be afraid to say yes to God. Don't be afraid to go where he wants you to go. I want to show you a little video, and then I'll pray with you.
Jesus said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable shall we use for it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when sown on the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants and puts out large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. And now, we are the evidence of this great truth. The living branches of God's kingdom, redeemed by the power of the cross, we've been grafted into his family, adopted as sons and commissioned as saints. Therefore we go, proclaim the King and His coming kingdom, empowered by the Spirit. We are sent to sow the seed of the gospel among every tribe, tongue, language, and people. What a mighty God we serve, ruler of heaven and earth, worthy of our every word, every thought, every breath. We exist to make His name known. He is our Father, undying in love. He is our Lord, our Redeemer, our King. He is enthroned forever. By the work of Christ alone, we are united in Him, heirs of the Kingdom of God. Reminded by the humblest of seeds. We have been redeemed. Now we go out and help others to find redemption in Jesus Christ. Would you stand with me, please? You know, there might be some people here, you're not even a mustard seed yet. You don't know Jesus the way that I have been talking about Jesus. You don't know Jesus as a best friend. You don't know Jesus as your savior or redeemer, or the one who shapes your bonsai tree. If you're here and you have never asked or had a relationship with Jesus Christ, and you want one today, you want to start, you want to be planted and grow, then I will be here after we dismiss. And if you come up, look, I have a mask. I wear it as part of my outfit. I would be happy to pray with you and lead you into that relationship. So I'll be hanging out up here after the service is over. And some of you, you know, are pretty much already full-grown trees. You're already doing the will of God, and that's wonderful. And we're all at different levels. Some of us have just been planted. You might be a new Christian, and you have your whole life ahead of you and things, and you want to know what God has for you. So I'm praying for people at all different levels right now. But I want you to know that there is a destiny that God has for you. Every child, every teenager, every adult in this place. So I want to pray in that vein that whatever you wind up doing is what God wants more than what you want. But may it be the same thing, what you want and what he wants. So Father, we come before you right now. For those that might be here that do not know you, we ask in Jesus' name that you would touch their hearts by the power of your Holy Spirit and you would cause them to make a decision that you would be the Lord of their lives and move upon their hearts right now. And for the others that are here at all different levels in their Christian walk, there is a plan for each one. There is a tree that you want them to grow into. I ask in Jesus' name that you would help them to become the man or the woman that they are supposed to be. I know that there are many struggles represented here today. I know that there are many different situations represented here today. And so we ask, Lord, that regardless of the situation, regardless of any baggage that they might have brought in here, regardless of that, that you would move by your spirit 
and that you would help everyone for their roots to grow deeper and that you would feed them the nutrients in the soil that they need to grow, grow strong and closer to you. Father, I know so much has happened at harvest, harvest time, even since I have been on staff. The last 20 years, so many good things. May it continue and continue and continue and see people saved here and all around the world because of the seeds sown from this place. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Pastor Nick, will you lead us in a song? And I'll be hanging out in the front afterwards. Absolutely. Thank you. Let's sing that song of worship and dedication that we were singing at the end of our worship time. Let's sing, I will build my life upon your love. And I will build my life upon you. Give the Lord one more hand of praise. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you, church. Have a wonderful week in Jesus. We'll see you soon.